What's going on, Bourbon World? Bourbon family, we are back at it. Ready to have some fun with uh, <laughs> Barrel Seagrass. Hey, but before we get started, hopefully again, as, as we enter the new year, hopefully everyone had a uh, fantastic holiday season. For me personally, uh, my favorite two gifts from Christmas were two things. Mrs. Judge got me, as you can see behind me, the new uh, Maker's Mark uh, save with the Bourbon Judge uh, uh, name on it as well, which is awesome. And my daughter got me a brand new gavel, right? So there we go, the brand new gavel. So this is the Bourbon Judge, established 2019. So hands down, my favorite Christmas gift from my girls. I love it. Uh, as my daughter reminded me, she's she like, Dad, I spent my own money. <laughs> <laughs> from babysitting she spent her own money on this gavel so out with the old gavel in with the new one so huge shout out to my girls uh, I love them with all my heart those are my girls but uh hey real quick we're gonna have some fun I have a lot of actually very important updates I need to share with everyone before we dive into this seagrass so huge shout out first and foremost to my, my new patrons so Aaron Chris and Justin, uh, thank you gentlemen for supporting the Bourbon Judge, as well as all my patrons as well. Really appreciate all the support, all the love, doing a lot of fun things uh, on my Patreon site. And uh, 2022, we're gonna have even more fun uh, as well. And again, I appreciate everyone else who also supports the Bourbon Judge and watches the channel, all the comments and so forth. So uh, thank you also for that as well. So, more updates, stay tuned for my first live stream which will take place at the end of january so the end of january i'm going live my first time ever there might be some technical issues <laughs> but we're gonna have fun i will be doing a collaboration so i'll have a, a couple different guests on some other youtube channels as well as just some other folks from the uh, let's call it the whiskey world as a whole so be on the lookout for that i'll share the date as we kind of finalize it uh pretty soon but um at the end of january i will have my first live stream there's going to be a ton of giveaways, uh, so like some different prizes as well. So make sure you guys uh, and gals check check that out as well. And then my next episode, be on the lookout for my top 2021 list, bourbon list of 2021. So can't wait to see uh, what makes the list and what doesn't make the list. All right, folks. I think it's time to dive into this barrel seagrass. So I'm going to go ahead and pour a little bit. Ugh. So... When you think about barrel bourbon, what comes to mind? Obviously, I reviewed in the past Barrel Armida. I reviewed in the past their sub brand, um, Stellum. And one thing I'll say about barrel products, and as I'll kind of just give a clip of those versions. So Barrel Bourbon, based out of Kentucky, they are known as being, you know, fantastic, let's call it, uh, blenders of bourbons, rise, and just whiskeys in general. So fantastic blenders, they're known for that. From an MSRP standpoint, their bottles typically range about $90, and with tax, you're paying it's essentially a $100 bottle. Now, what I will say is, you know, I've had multiple different releases. I've had the Dovetail, I've had Batch, I think it was 23, Batch 27, um, obviously, of course, Barrel Armida, Stellum. And one thing, the reason why I don't review a ton on the channel of barrel products, if you ever notice, is the fact that I never walk away from after sipping a barrel product and saying, wow, I love that. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, Bourbon Judge, it looks like you really love that Armida. Maybe, but maybe not. I've had this a few times with friends, typically with a cigar because it's just so powerful and so, well not really powerful, so sweet rather. It's so sweet. It goes well with the cigar and it kind of cuts like the smokiness <laughs> of the cigar, especially over ice during the summertime. A lot of me and my buddies, we've enjoyed that. But honestly, whenever we've had a bourbon night, I've we've never walked away and said, wow, can't wait to grab that bottle of barrel bourbon again. Just being honest with you. I mean, you know, we had that conversation about like Elijah Craig, about Stag Jr., about maybe even like an H. Teller small batch or whatever it might be. But we've no one's ever said, hey, bourbon judge, when we come back over the next time, grab that bottle of barrel bourbon. We just, that just doesn't come up, at least not, <laughs> not with me and my friends. Um, hey, again, I'm not saying that I dislike barrel products. I just don't think they're worth the hype, the $100 price point. However, this bottle of uh, seagrass, whoo, it's gotten a lot of love from my, uh, let's call it my peers out there in the whiskey tuber world. A lot of people has made their top 10 list, top five, top whatever list. It's made their list. So I was like, you know what? I got to give it a shot. Plus, plus, hold on, 
even my store connects were like, hey, Bourbon Dutch, you need to try this. And they weren't just trying to sell me a bottle. They were straight up with me like, hey, you know, we've had the Armida before and you were right. That is way too sweet. But they're like, but this bad boy, it's definitely the truth. So we're going to go ahead and dive into it and see what it's all about. All right. So let's go ahead and dive into this barrel seagrass. So this one, definitely different than the Armida because the Armida is a bourbon. Then it has very, a lot of the same finishes. But this one is a rye whiskey finish in Martique rum. Madeira and apricot brandy uh, barrel finishes. Comes in at 118.4 proof. So let me let you guys see that bottle. There you go, 118.4. And I will say also that this one, um, when it's finished, they're actually finished as separate. So it's finished separate in rum, uh, then Madeira, and then brandy. So separate finishes. And the rise come from Kentucky, Indiana, AKA MGP. And then last but not least, Canada as well. So they source three different rods for this and then these were then finished in the separate different barrel finishes again from a price standpoint you're going about it's about an $85 bottle again with tax you're in the mid 90s so again this is a hundred dollar bottle so you guys know me you know the way I rock and roll every single time I pop a bottle I always pour a good bit in my infinity bottle um, so I've already did that had let it have a chance to kind of air out and breathe a little bit so that's all done I'm ready to dive into this bad boy cool all right hey before we uh dive into it real quick three quick easy favors for me number one hit the like button number two drop me a comment love going back and forth nothing better than that and then last but not least please make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you get the notifications each time i put out content man i am ready for this one boy this is like whoo this is <laughs> this is uh this is gonna be interesting because again i've never been wild by a barrel based product before so we shall see here we go folks let's let's get into it mm, all right all right not bad on the nose last thing i'll say about the seagrass there's no age statement so we don't know the exact age of the rise but one thing i do like about barrel is the fact that you can find barrel at almost across like the entire u.s like i've traveled like i said i travel quite often for work but even personally as well, typically for bourbon or just with the family, every state that I've been to, at least like 10, 15, 20 states, I've seen barrel-based products in. And from what I know, they're available in about at least like 90, 95% of across the US. So they're pretty easy to find. That's a good thing about barrel products. Definitely very easy to find. All right, so from the nose, wow, this is like, damn. So number one, what I like about the nose is, even though it has like that finish of like the Madeira, the rum and the apricot brandy uh, finish, you still get a, you still, it still reminds you that it's still definitely a rye. The rye is sitting there, that spiciness, that earthiness, that's still there in, in, the, in the core of the nose. But there's a ton going on here. Shit, there's a, <laughs> there's a lot going on here, which, which is good though. All right, so in addition to like that earthiness, like the pepper and just like earthy, like spiciness, you get a ton of like, Wow, this is this is really interesting. I, I can't lie, I'm actually quite impressed. Just just off the nose, I'm impressed. You get like a lot of like grapes, like grapes, some apples, some pears. Wow, lots of grapes, very fruity. Grape, apples, pears, a little bit of honey. Mmm. Wow, this is so damn lovely so lovely on the nose oh my gosh wow that is really really nice wow very fruit forward but you still get the spiciness from the uh from the rye oh man almost like some uh some berries in there as well maybe even like some uh some strawberries in there wow so from the nose standpoint so far this seagrass has impressed me <laughs> It's impressed me thus far, but let's see how it is in palate. Hey, cheers everybody out there. Here's to 2022. Let's enjoy this new year for all of us and from me to you. Cheers, everybody. Okay. All right. That's quite interesting, to say the least. Wow, look at the legs on that too. Look at that, oh my gosh, that's beautiful. All right, before I get into the um, the palette and the finish, 
Let me get a little bit more. Okay. <laughs> wow. Damn, that is so different. Way different than Armida. Way better than Armida. Let me just be clear. Way better than Armida. All right. So there's a couple things. Number one. Everything from the nose transferred to the palate. That is definitely a very fruit forward rye. Tons of um, like apples, tons of pears, tons of honey, and tons of strawberry. What I like about it is that it's all mixed in very well, but the rye is mixed in also, and in the spiciness of the rye is also mixed in. It's very fruit forward as a whole, but it's spicy at the same time. A long finish, extremely long, Extremely bold, right? This one coming in at 118.4 proof. Long, extremely bold, but not like, you know, like too powerful. It's just powerful enough where it's a fantastic overall experience from the start to the ending. Wow. Using the new gavel for the first time. Question is, Bourbon Judge at $95, let's just call it 100 bucks. Is this truly worth picking up? And is it that damn good? Folks, the judgment is in. That's three gavels good. <laughs> that is fantastic. It's like an explosion of just berries and spice in your mouth. Tons of like strawberries, apples and honey and uh, just like pears and peaches all coming together with the spiciness of the rye. The rye is, I think, what cuts it and what makes it much different than the barrel uh, Armida. The Armida, I think bourbon by itself is just so naturally sweet. But this one was like almost too powerful, right? Hence the reason why I've always said I enjoyed it with the cigar and even with, honestly, with some ice cubes that add some water to it because it's just almost overly power powerful from a sweetness standpoint. The spiciness of the rye is what makes this so unique and so different. That's pretty damn good. <laughs> that is pretty damn good. Hey, until the next time, peace, cheers, salute. Appreciate everyone out there. Talk to you guys and gals later. Peace out.